The EOS M5 is not dead. Canon will announce the EOS M5 II later this year. In this video, I'll talk about the rumor, the difference between the M6 and the M5, and provide you with free, quick, and simple tools and techniques to help you evaluate camera gear. Delivering informative capability-based reviews and tutorials on camera gear, filming techniques, and content creation. It's Simon from The Ordinary Filmmaker. If you're new here, make sure you click that subscribe button, and all the links to everything I talk about in this video are in the description down below. Fresh from Canon Rumors, the EOS M5 Mark II will be announced later this year. The M5 will have in-body image stabilization, a built-in electronic viewfinder, and improved build quality. And it will be available for sale in early 2021, along with two new lenses. Canon will be adding the EF-M52 F2 STM, which is equivalent to 85mm on a full-frame camera. Canon is also working on the EF-M 100-300, but this is not expected to be out until 2021. This is good news for M5 and M6 customers that have been wondering about Canon's commitment to the EF-M system. With rumors of an APS-C RF body rumored to be in development, some are wondering if Canon plans to continue the APS-C mirrorless system. I even wondered this myself in this video. Eventually, Canon might migrate everything over to the RF system, but it does not look like this will happen anytime soon with the M5 Mark II on the horizon, and let's not forget, Canon just released the M6 last August. The APS-C EOS RF body is likely to be aimed at customers of the 6D or 7D, which is the high end of the APS-C market. While it will not play in the same segment as the M5 Mark II, if the APS-C RF body is successful, it could pave the way for more budget-friendly APS-C cameras and eventually spell the end of the M5 or the M system. Canon is also rumored to be releasing a budget-friendly version of the RP later this year, potentially cannibalizing the M system further. If you are considering the M5 Mark II, consider your roadmap. Do you eventually see yourself migrating to the RF system? If so, consider buying EF and EFS lenses that can be migrated to the RF system. Both can be adapted to the RF system for $100 and are issue free. The M5 and its lenses are compact, they're lightweight and priced for consumers that want to upgrade away from smartphones to produce better images and videos. While smaller and lighter lenses are being developed for the RF system, they are slightly bigger and heavier than what's available on the M system. If you're looking at the M5 Mark II, you should also consider the M6. Before the Mark II came along in October 2019, the only differentiator or the only real differentiator between the M5 and the M6 was the position of the flip-out screen, up or down. And that really only mattered if you were a YouTube personality or you were doing vlogging. It was a mirrorless equivalent of the 90D. It came with 4K, improved autofocus, 2.5 megapixel camera sensor, eye autofocus, 14 frames per second, and great low light sensitivity. Oh, it also came with 120 frames per second slow motion and raw burst mode up to 30 frames per second. And I could keep going on. It provided so much. The M6 provides much better value than the M5. For the ordinary filmmaker, if you're considering these two lenses, go with the M6 Mark II or even consider the 90D, although it's much heavier. However, just as the M6 Mark II leapfrogged the M5 Mark I, the M5 Mark II will likely leapfrog the M6 Mark II. The M5 will get the same sensor, same capabilities as the M6, but it will have in-body image stabilization, be better built, and have a built-in electronic viewfinder. Still confused which system to get? A capability map can help simplify the decision making. Let me show you what I mean. Using Keynote, I organize the capabilities that are important to me. You could use PowerPoint or just draw them out on a piece of graph paper. A capability is simply an outcome that you want out of the camera, so think of what it is you're trying to get out of a camera. Don't get caught up in the specifications. Here are the capabilities I came up with for the Fuji X-T3. I spend most of my time shooting video, so trustworthy autofocus is very important to me. Yours will be different from mine. You might choose portability, ease of use, compact and lightweight, producing travel videos, scenic photos, portraits, and so on. Organize these capabilities so that they're visually clean. 
the order doesn't matter. Next, come up with a simple scoring model. I choose green for excellent. That means it performs a capability very well. I choose orange for capabilities that mostly meet the capability, but there's something important missing. Red means it either performs the capability poorly or it's just not there at all. I recently compared the Fuji X-T3 to the X-T4. The heat map visually shows us how well multiple cameras meet our expectations. It removes that complexity, enabling us to ask the right questions and make informed decisions. But one thing is missing. I'm treating all these capabilities with the same importance. On the left, the heat map shows us how well the camera performs the desired outcomes. On the right, the heat map shows us the level of importance of each capability. In this example, the XT performs well against my capabilities, but most importantly, it scores very well with those capabilities I consider mandatory. Here, I used the same heat map to compare different lenses against my desired outcomes. These tools and techniques simplify complex and detailed information and help you focus on what is important, helping you make an informed decision. I'm not here to influence you or to get you to buy cameras that I like. I'm here to inform you and provide you with the same tools that I use so that you can make your own informed decisions. Always do your own research. Thank you for watching The Ordinary Filmmaker. All equipment used and notes are placed in the description box, show more box, or down arrow thingy next to the title on the mobile app.